Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, good evening, or good morning. It depends on where you are in the world. Welcome to the beautiful Ritz Carton in the Cayman Islands, where we're doing a live recording for Let's Get Loud. We're hearing the story of Jolene Ramos, who was diagnosed with brain cancer in the height of COVID, May 14, 2020. Her son, Kaden, was the one who was instrumental in, I would say, saving his mom's life because he witnessed everything that happened to Jolene that morning from the seizures that she wasn't even aware of. And he was the one who recalled everything that happened. You heard of his story last week and what happened to mommy and how he was able to help mommy to get help. So ladies and gentlemen, if your kids crawl into your bed, please do not run them. They might just be the ones to save your lives. So this week where the story continues as Jolene now journeys from the emergency room to the surgical ward and her husband is gonna join her as they recount together and recall together exactly what happened. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to Let's Get Loud, Jolene Ramos and her husband. Welcome guys, thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you. Ah, hi, Jolene. Hey, Mr. Ramos, how are you? All right. I could say, como esta? A little bit of Spanish here, you know, we got to really get that in. Jolene, if you want to come over a little bit sure. to me. I know you, you want to be close to your husband, but yeah. yeah he's going to move in. All right. So last week, Jolene, you, you journeyed to the emergency room and you called your husband and out of a good number of contacts that you made, he was able to come in and see you because mm -hmm. like you rightfully said, mm -hmm. this was a major decision mm -hmm. and it requires discussion between the husband and the wife. Mr. Ramos, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> when you, <laughs> when you got that call, when you got that call, um, tell us. Um, Tell us, how did you feel? Yeah. <clears throat> I, um, I didn't feel shot. I just felt like, okay, a team member is down. So mm -hmm. we have a team member back up, mm -hmm. help, you know, whatever she needs and um, get her back home safely. That's mainly it. It's nothing. No one, well, for me, I don't think, um, stopping to think about it was never uh, in my mind i just you know do what do we do next what does the doctor say where do we go how do we treat it how long does it take you know do we still have a job all of those things was what popped into my mind right yeah. right and then you had to communicate this to your children as well yeah um i i assume because Kaden was young mm -hmm. and um, i would try to use less words and i would just say you know mommy is sick we're right. gonna get her better right. and uh, you know just get you know to just be patient Right, yeah. right. I like what you said, a team member is down. Yeah. It's a family, it's a it unit, is. it's a team. That's right. And when a team member goes down, everybody yeah. tries their best to pull back that team member yeah. up. Yeah. So you journeyed to the hospital. When you got there, what happened? So I went to the surgical ward. Right. Um, then I made some contacts during the night mm -hmm. in, in the early morning to say, well, Dr. James, which Dr. James is this? Right. Does he take a lot of chances? What kind of doctor is he? Wow. Yeah. You're detailed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did compliance for many years. Ah. So, yeah. Compliance. So I went and I did, did all that. And he, I got him in to be able to meet me because he said no visitors. Right. I made some calls, mm -hmm. got him in, but he had to wear protective gear. Oh, wow. Visit me. Like a spaceship. So, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he basically couldn't leave the hospital so when he came the day he couldn't leave because zona passed to get into the one day they gave him the PPI, PPI i think it's called 
Okay. I don't protective, understand. Protective, protective personal something. protective equipment or oh, okay, or okay. the whole gown and oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. mask and all. Wow. So they were going to give him one and he, it's only good for the one time. One time. So he couldn't leave the room. He couldn't go come out of the hospital or anything. So he wasn't like, well, I feel to eat something. Can you go get me something? No. Oh, wow. He couldn't leave. And have to order food in the hospital as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you definitely, you couldn't even touch her then? You could. Yeah, you could. Okay. Um, I must say, though, I have to commend the they came out of this hospital. They did a good job during COVID. Yeah. They made you feel safe. Um, well, we put on our gowns. We put on our masks. Mm -hmm. She also um, doing her part. And the doctors and the nurse, everybody, you know, you could see everybody doing their part uh, to avoid the spread of COVID in for any you know, instance it was right. in the area. Mm -hmm. But um, she was also diagnosed with COVID. Um, yeah, okay. and uh, she. After that was while I was there because they after he visited mm -hmm. and Dr. James came in and everything. Right. Um, they came that night and said to me that the test they had done in the ER that that allowed me to come up right to surgical ward right showed that I was a low positive. Okay. So they had to take me from the surgical ward and take me over to a quarantine area, which is. At the hospital, which was the old physiotherapist, Physi mm -hmm. so I was there, quarantined, with one nurse and I don't know how many, like six beds, but they weren't all filled. Thank God, okay. it was just me alone. Okay, so then, what happened when Doctor James came then? What so, do, yeah, let, so we had scheduled when Doctor James right. came. We had the conversation with him. What do I need to do? From the moment he walked in, he was very clear. He said, "This is not." A brain infection or anything. He right. said this is definitely something more sinister, but based on all his experience. Right. Which and he was on point. Um. So he said we need to do a biopsy as soon as possible. So we looked at each other. We kind of said, well, what, what do you think? What do you think? Right. And you know, my daughter, Kayla, Kayla was allowed to be there, but on speaker for me. Okay. Is what he okay. allowed. Mm -hmm. So she was asking questions as well. Okay. What does Kayla do? She is. Uh, teacher for special needs and behavior kids. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, okay. Thought she was in the medical industry. Mm -hmm. She's okay. just she's just quick on her wow. thinking very wow. quick. Wow. Yeah. And she pays attention. And she pays attention. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So this all happened before you were placed into quarantine. Yeah. Okay. And then mm -hmm. he um but I had already made, you know, some calls to see well what type of person, like what kind of doctor he was, and people were saying, and some people said, you know, he's not very polite or whatever. And I was like, I don't care about that bedside right. manner. Right. I care about what's going to happen. Exactly. So he said, what do I want to do? And mm. I said, well, we want to do what I have to do. To wow. Continue raising we want children. to do what we have, have to, to do. do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was ready to do the, bi the biopsy that same day. He said, no, Miss Ramos. He said, we will go do it in the morning, tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> you were ready. Yeah. But you weren't wasting any time. Yes. I also understand that it's not really a surgery to fix anything. It was just to get a, a sample, right. a deep sample, yeah. um, to find out how how big it is, mm -hmm. um, how how old is it, and um, wow. and what it is. Um, what, what is it? Grade, what stage? What, what grade level was it? Yeah. So yeah, that was the the. So that's why we were like, you know, okay. I think you can do that. That's not a problem. Even mm -hmm. though we don't think that you might be a specialist and you don't have the environment right, to, right. to do such a delicate yes. job, right. um, we say, okay, if mm -hmm. it's uh, for a sample, then not a problem. We'll do what we can do here because we want to know as quickly as possible Good. as well. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So. so then after that, they took you to isolation. Yep. And then at that point, mm -hmm. after I found out about the COVID, I had already arranged with Dr. James in the morning okay. to do this biopsy. Right. The following day, they came the night now mm -hmm. to tell me that I had the low positive. COVID, COVID result. Okay. Um, and I was like, well, are they even going to do the surgery tomorrow mm -hmm. with the COVID mm -hmm. and all? Because right, right. you know you're gonna need an anesthesiologist right. or whatever there, mm -hmm. even though I know I was going to do a week. So my biopsy they're drilling into my head, I would be awake. Because he needed me to do some functionalities, because he was saying that where the tumor was resting mm -hmm. was on even though it was on the front lobe. It was also resting right on the border of where my motor skills is for my left side. So I need to be awake 
so that he could give me instructions during the biopsy to move certain parts of my left side okay. to be okay. Okay. So he didn't go too far in, too deep into the tumor or too close to that area when he was doing the biopsy. Okay. So you said about the, the, the tumor right was in the frontal, frontal lobe. lobe. Yeah. Are you still functioning as if nothing is happening? Yeah, it was just where we're talking about centimeters, just where down that border. Mm-hmm. And that was the part further down the line you're hearing about her being paralyzed. That's what uh-huh. caused it yeah, because it was, it's, it's, it's like the brain divided into five different uh, sections. sections. Mm-hmm. Each section is responsible for something mm-hmm. memory, uh, motor skills. Touch. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, you, 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 you know a brain specialist, man. I, I'm learning. I'm learning a lot right now. Right now. We're going to do a lot of Googling. Wow. Yeah. That's the bad part is that. We didn't have no one else to turn to. Ah. Yeah. So that's the no one in the family, family, in our family, sure. her family, in her, my family, mm-hmm. no friends, nothing. We, we know no one that had ever had a situation like that before. Wow. So we had to go by what the doctors tell us, and we had to make sure that we Google whatever mm-hmm. we could. And, um, and one thing we learned real mm-hmm. quick, understand the proper terminology of uh, what they're trying to tell you. Ah. So don't just say brain tumor. Right. It's more like you know, use the proper words yeah. of what type of brain tumor she okay. has. Okay. Yeah, because if you Google brain tumor, you'll get millions oh, of results. Right, right, yeah. right. But you, when you, I don't know. And what was the one people. you have? I you have uh, anaplastic oligodendroglioma. Okay. All yeah. right. Okay. That's, then. One that's, that's, one that, that's one word. Okay. So they just break it off and say, a-O, which makes A-O, sense. Which yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Because that's a mouthful. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. More than a mouthful. Okay. So tell us then, um, Jolene, mm-hmm. when you went to do, did they do it the next day? Because yes. that was, they, they did it. Yeah. Wow. So you, so it was heightened. Still, yeah. In spite of COVID, mm-hmm. it was heightened. Yeah. Okay. So it kind of, that told me that, you know, whatever was going on mm-hmm. was very serious. Mm-hmm. The fact that if I test the person, you're still going through right. the operation. Right. Yeah. Right. So mm-hmm. we knew that things were going to be get crazy get crazy yeah mm-hmm. so we went on then and um said to him after so i stayed awake during the whole okay so, and how was that that was horrible, horrible. Uh, can you just horrible. if if it's not too much can you just share just a little yeah. bit about it yeah i remember going into the or mm-hmm. i remember dr james being there i remember him just pinning my head onto this thing so that i could move mm-hmm. so like it was cold, but it was just like holding my head steady. Steady. Yeah. And then my neck and everything. And I remember the smell. It smelled horrible. And it would drop my head. I could hear it. I could smell it. And then I got a little bit of anesthesia. And I can remember waking up. But when I said get some anesthesia, it makes me very drowsy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But obviously enough that he can still ask me to do things okay because i had to still be able to pick things up with my left hand and do other things and that's when i can remember i can remember the anesthesia colleges mm-hmm. and she gave me it was a card i don't know whose card it was like a business card right and she asked me to pick it up and i remember it kept falling out of hand. i kept picking it up and it kept falling out picking it up and, kept falling out. and she started saying that you could hear she was getting a little frantic and she was like dr james dr james and then i can remember him putting the staples in my head. It was the most painful thing I have ever experienced in my life. Every staple that went into my head, I felt it. Every single one. So the staple was to close my skull, the hole that they had drilled to get to the tumor. Yeah. Those those titanium staples and they hurt like crazy. You said that. Yes. You said that. Yes, I did. Thank you. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. So, did were they able? Yeah. Were they able? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Mm. That's okay. No need to apologize. No need to. No need to. If, if you didn't cry, then I would think you're a superwoman. <laughs> I would look for your cape or something. <laughs> if you didn't cry, I really would think you're a superwoman. Wow. So, so how long did the pain last? Did, were they able to give you anything for the pain? Any at all? I would get paracetamol 
in the then I had to go from because of the whole COVID right. situation right. and because I just had the brain biopsy, I had to be taken to intensive care unit where they had one special room there where the air would flow out of the actual room because they thought I had COVID. Right. Right. So I stayed in there and I had a nurse, my nurse in an isolated room attached to me wearing, you know, the whole the protective whole gear and the N95s and everything with me for whatever it was I needed. So that nurse, yeah, she was on the line as well yes. for you. Mm -hmm. So thank you frontline workers, yes. gosh, for putting yourselves on the front line. Oh God, thank you so much. People don't understand the, the fear, not only the fear of maybe I can get this thing, my whole family, everything, mm -hmm. but thank you so much for putting yourselves out there and helping people like Julie. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and what happened after that? And then, so the next day, mm -hmm. they asked me to, I would only stay in the hospital for the one day in the intensive care and then mm -hmm. I would come out and then it was, like I said, they took COVID very seriously. Right. So when I had to be transported to the car with him, he had to have on the mask. So they home. sent you back home with, no. with the COVID? She didn't have no symptoms. I had no symptoms. None, none, no. absolutely none. Okay. And as you might hear further down the line, mm -hmm. we did another test, test in Minnesota, and they said that she never had no traces of COVID at all. At all. Yeah. So, you it know, we have happened. to... It was a low positive, so we for the moment mm -hmm. we took it for what it was, right? And right. we took it serious, right? Mm -hmm. And when we took her home, mm -hmm. we left. She was in one room, okay. and we were on the outside, and we took it serious to the right. point where we wouldn't interact with her at all, other than phone, yeah. um, videos in your own home, yeah. yeah, in your own home. Leave it food outside my room door, yeah. So you were able to go get your food yourself. No, no, he was I able was to go out, put it by the front door, by the door. Yeah. By the door, right? Yeah. And then you walked and got it. So yeah. you walked to the front. So your your, your motor skills were operational. Yeah. Oh wow! At that time, at that time, that, time. that was after biopsy. Right. And then during that, I mean, well, during the biopsy, mm -hmm. he explained that it would take a lot longer to get the results because of oh, COVID as well. Okay. So what would take two weeks normally was going to take a month now. Wow. And, and how did you feel with that? Because knowing you knew there was, well, was something. Scary right. because, and I was scared of seizures because I was locked away in the room by myself oh, now God, because of yes. COVID. So because no I okay then, no. Yeah, so I told, had to tell everybody that I had been in contact with, my workplace, right. my family, right. um, anybody. I didn't meet any clients during the COVID, mm -hmm. so yeah. So all those people, and I called my boss, they all got tested. Okay. My family got tested, right. Katie got tested, he got tested, right. the daughter, my other daughter that lives, Casey, that lives in the house, right. she got tested, but she'd been tested before too, mm. and we, I even said to him, how's that possible when Casey got tested a couple of weeks ago, Right. and she didn't, she tested negative, negative. and you, you and weren't yeah, moving in and out, right? we were all interacting, interacting with each other, right. yeah. Mm. So, yeah. So but we heard not. about Kaden, but we haven't heard about Casey and how she... She dealt with the whole thing. How old is Casey? She's 22 now. Okay. She's 21 at, at a time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how did she deal with all of this? Um, Casey deals with stuff slightly different. So <laughs> her situation is that if I don't see it, it don't exist. Uh -huh. Not saying she don't believe that I have brain cancer, but her way of coping yeah. is if I don't see it, if you're not around me constantly and I don't see your illness, right. then it doesn't. Um, it's not it. real. Yeah. She lives in denial, I guess. Oh, precious. Yeah. yeah, well, that's a part of grieving. Mm -hmm. you yeah. know, denial mm -hmm. is part of grieving. Yeah. All right. So tell us more about the um, isolation and you said the fear of getting seizure. Just, help. Yeah, I will be in here by myself. Mm -hmm. And then every day, public health would call and check on me okay. to make sure that I hadn't left. They had conversations with me on the phone. I was like, I would never expose somebody, you know? knowing that what, right. what you guys have said, but it's becoming hard because we got to the point where between him and I, we were setting our phones for two o'clock in the morning to message. So I would uh, message him to say, I'm okay. okay. Because, right. you know, if I'm in there and I'm having a seizure, there's nobody to help me. There's nobody to call 911. There's nobody to try and wake me up if I get into difficulty. But I mean, they did put me on seizure medications okay. after the biopsy. Yeah, how did that? 
make you feel was there any side yeah, effect well, i yes. didn't have any seizures that i know of but i did have an allergic reaction to the me medicine yeah yeah you, you want to develop. describe that a little bit sure it was called it's called Stephen Johnson syndrome. It's basically your skin breaks out in blisters. Okay. It's like, it's like one small mm -hmm. mosquito bite multiplied times what felt like a million. Yeah. All over the whole body. Uh -huh. Everything, leg, yeah. arms, yeah. neck. And it just starts face, spreading here. Yeah. Everything. And I went to the hospital. It was like the second week of being on the medication uh -huh. after I had got COVID negative right. results and right. stuff. Um, we went and got the. That's okay. That's okay. Um, it's okay. Yeah. Just, just take it easy. Yeah. yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. You went to get it. Yeah. <laughs> I went to get something for this rash right. that was breaking up yeah. on me. But at the time, we didn't know. And after I started taking the seizure medication, we noticed that I would shake a lot, even when we could get back together, like in the bed. Right. I would tell you, I would just be like shaking, like shivering, cold mm. all the time. Mm. And that was, I, I didn't know at the time, but that was a side effect of showing that I was allergic to this medicine. And did the doctor pull you off it? Well, when I went to the ER, which mm -hmm. is where, they told, where Dr. James told me to go, right. they meet me there. Right. They flushed my system up with the medication, they said, and um, I should have been okay. Mm -hmm. But two days later, I woke up, my husband said, what's wrong with your face? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, your face is big and swollen. And I go in the mirror and my face is swollen. And this medication is still having an effect on me. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. It lasted for about two weeks. The yeah. swollen face? The rash yeah. and the swollen face. Yeah. yeah. And I had to because, be readmitted again. Yeah. It was it was horrible because it was like itching. Your whole body is itching and you can't. Like measles, it. right? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Where it's, it's tighter, tighter, yeah. come more compact. Yeah. And, and it so, would go in your mouth and you would have to, yeah, your mouth would bleed. And, I was in, they admitted me to the hospital again in the medical ward after the second reaction. Because I said, if I got flushed and you're giving me these allergy medicines, right. then why am I still breaking out? And they said, okay, they did the whole thing again and gave me, um, admitted me to the hospital the second time around. Okay. So it was just a matter of two days between, yeah, the first. And I went and they said they flushed it out mm -hmm, my system mm -hmm. and then going back again two days later. Two days later with a swollen face. Yeah. And the rash is spreading coming down my neck and face and everything. Yeah. I have pictures on my phone. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was a real bad down because she is with this rash, mm -hmm. the second time she got admitted to the hospital, mm -hmm. and she's trying to talk to us, and she has no comfort at all, mm -hmm. no one there to counsel her, and, and she is, you know, itching all over and, and, and can't heat, sleep. Yeah. can't sleep, and it was just horrible, yeah. really, really horrible. The medicine they were giving me to rub on my skin, right? Like I told him, if you ever wash your skin on the skin of the kids, where things look like it's crawling on your skin, that's how it felt every time I put it on. Like I would feel like my skin was crawling. And it would be hot. Like I would get hot, burning up, sweating, waking up in the night, like sweating. Like my, like and that lasted for two weeks. Yeah. And even when we went into Minnesota, mm -hmm. then over there, they took samples of our skin to try yeah. to figure out what Quite it was. Yeah. And then they, it, they realized what it was. Mm -hmm. And they gave me a, a treatment that I had to cover mm -hmm. her whole body in. And then we had to do like warm towels and go for, cover her whole body and let her sit there for about 20 to 30 minutes. For how many days? Twice, twice a day, okay. till I did the surgery. So about two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks of covering her up. Mm -hmm. so Ten days, something like that. Um, wow. So then, after the results came back, because I know we're getting to Minnesota before we get the results yeah. and everything. So the months flew by with two weeks of rashes and and mm -hmm. swollen face. Yeah. Right, and then and what then happened? And finally, I called Dr. James and I said, you know, have you got the results back? Yeah. From the biopsy? And then he said, oh, yeah. oh, so who was supposed to call you? I guess he was thinking that because the thing was ordered through the hospital, he, they would be the ones to make contact, but oh. they didn't, and he didn't. So 
So you were left in limbo after two weeks of rashes and swollen face and COVID. And COVID. Yeah. Nobody called you. Yeah. But thank God you called. Yeah. And what did he say? He said, um, Mm. then afterwards, he said to me that it came back and it's not stage two, it's stage three. Because he thought it was stage two before doing the biopsy. Okay. But. It was actually stage. When he got the final report, it's stage, stage three. three. Yeah. And how did Jolene feel when she got the final report? I stage? felt devastated. I felt bad. I felt, what am I doing now? Where does my life go? Mm-hmm. So I said, you know what? This is something I've always wanted to do. And I put it off. And I think that God is speaking to me now. This is time for me to change my life. Mm-hmm. And I made the decision. Mm-hmm. Um, to get back to the hospital. Okay, so that's a, a, a very good point mm-hmm. to end the segment on. Mm-hmm. You made the decision to change your life. You have been putting it off mm-hmm. and you made a decision. He was. Mm-hmm. He, he, he got your attention. Mm-hmm. He got yeah. your attention, Jolene. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, hello, I'm right here now. Yeah. I know people say my head is hard, so I guess. Oh, really? Is, yeah. <laughs> Jolie, <laughs> I, I don't want to say it because I don't want to say it. This is a serious, serious conversation. So no, your head is hard. Okay. We yeah. won't go there. We won't. Because you went through an ordeal. Yeah. I mean, head is hard as in God was talking to I you. Know, I, I know. I know. I know, right? Yeah. I know. Yeah. And he had to literally drill into your head. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. To get your attention, yeah. Jolie. I didn't hear him knocking at the door. I didn't. But if I did, I didn't answer. He, he, you just ignored him. Yeah. yeah. But he drilled into yeah. your head mm-hmm. and got your attention. Yes. And that's where we're going to stop. Okay. We're going to stop for this week because right. that has been a lot for you mm-hmm. to, to share. And Mr. Ramos, thank you so much you. for the support, thank the you. support of being here, the support you provided to your team member who was down. I love it. Team member who was down. I also had a point out that the rash that she got, mm-hmm. I think after the 10 days, it felt so good that she still wanted me to continue doing that thing. No, Jesus. <laughs> it's like, see, one bump. Oh, no. Oh, one bump. One bump. Yeah. Oh, one bump. oh, oh that was, oh, 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 like, no. oh, that was total no TLC. <laughs> that, was, that was, oh. That was, um. Yeah, there was some, no, but it was, it was really, there was, there's a fun side to it, but it was a yeah. really ugly side to it. Yeah. She could not sleep. She mm-hmm. could not sleep. So even though she knew she, she was going into the, the surgery, mm. she couldn't sleep. She couldn't, because your skin was on fire. Your skin was on fire. And, you know, for you to be able to sleep, you're, 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 you have to be at peace. Yes. Yes. So yes. That was, mm-hmm. But look at her skin now. It is. Isn't she lovely? (laughs) Again, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard, you heard, you heard the diagnosis. You heard the drilling. You heard the rush. You heard the swelling. And you heard the TLC that was applied. And the last thing you heard was that God knocked at her door and she finally answered. And that's what we're going to talk about next, next week when we hear more about how Jolene made a decision to yield to the knocking and the hard head became soft and so did our hearts. So until next week, again, I invite you, please share this video because a lot of people need to hear, a lot of husbands need to hear how to apply TLC. <laughs> A lot of husbands, a lot of families need to know how to make decisions together. And a lot of families need to hear how to provide support to their loved ones, to their team member. When a team member is down, to pull them back up. So until then, please, again, share, leave your comment. And if you haven't subscribed as yet, please do. For the sake of family, please do. (laughs) And thank you. And until next week. It's goodbye from the Ritz Garden in Grand Cayman, where every day it's a beautiful day.